It's dead. Pick it up. I didn't want to, but I did. It was soft and warm, and they lifted in my hands like a newborn hug. It was the first time that I've ever held anything dead. I carried it to Daddy and tried to hand it to him. You carry him. The sun was going down ahead of us, and the sky was a fire with red, purple, orange, yellow, and green. All that beautiful color and light, and the feeling of Daddy being so close, was almost more than I could stand. <coughs> Boy, everything sure looks fine, doesn't it, Daddy? Yeah, God sure was stupid to make people when he could have kept us all for himself. After the war, when Daddy came home, he was changed. He had always been a brutal man, and now he was even more. At that moment, I didn't know what his love and fear him. One morning, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned. What's that? I'm going to help somebody. They have been worshipped as though they were gods. <sighs> they were often the objects of superstition and ridicule. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They have been pampered, poor baby, chastised, bad, 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 bad kitty, kitty, and experimented on, gobble, gobble, gobble. Yet through it all, they haven't remained regal, independent, and sophisticated. Old Popper's book of Practical Cash by T.S. Eliot. <laughs> How would you address a cat? Cats are much like you and me. And other people whom we buy have left to various types of minds. For some are sane and some are bad. Some are better, some are worse. But all may be described in verse. I have a gummy cat in mind. Her name is Jenny Yeti Dot. Her coat is of the tabby kind with tiger stripes and leopard spots. Roar! But when the day's hustle and bustle is done, the gummy cat's work is but hardly begun. She is deeply concerned with the ways of the mice. Aww. Their behavior's not good and their manner's not nice. Can you hear me? Huh? What? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, sure. I can hear you real good. Good. Have a seat, Joe. We're out here. Wait a second. I get it now. You can see me, right? Yes, that's correct. You can see me, but I can't see you. Far out. What? Nothing, nothing. Well, how do I look? Have a seat, Joe. That bad, huh? Well, I feel all right. I've lost a little weight, but outside of that, I'm okay. Have a seat, Joe. Sure, sure. What do you want? Nothing special. We just wanted to talk. Give you a chance to see how we do this. Hey. You got people watching me? You seem to be in very good spirits. Never better. Like I said, I feel great. Good. Oh, my family's coming today. Yes, we know. <laughs> they would have come sooner, but we couldn't afford it. You know, not after all these stupid bills. And I figured I'd get myself back into shape and be able to... Have you seen the cottage? Happen. Oh, yeah. It's real nice. They're going to love it. Good. It'll just take them a while to get used to things. That's all. Here! Over here! Steven! Then everything's settled, right? I wrote to Maggie and told her the whole setup. And your son. Well, see, that's a little different. I told Maggie to tell him. I figured he should know before he got here. Good. Come on, Mom! It's not easy. You need to get to my breath. I guess you know that. <coughs> get used to the idea, but it's not easy. You seem fine. Oh, me? Yeah, sure. But Maggie... What number did you say, Mom? What number cottage are you in? Uh, one, number one. Number one, number one, they said. You get scared at first. Plenty. And then you get angry. Oh, is that okay for me to say that? That's all right, Joe. It's all right for you to feel angry, or depressed, or even happy. If that's how you feel, we want to hear as much as you want to tell us. Yeah, because I was really angry. I don't mind telling you that. In fact, I'm glad just to say it. Come on, I've been tired Mom. of keeping it all bottled up inside. But it's like nobody ever wants to hear what I have to say. You know what I mean? It's going to give me a heart attack, Stephen. There's still a few things. I guess I could talk to you about them later. Even if it's just to listen. That's what we're here for, Joe. I mean, it happens to everybody, right? I'm not special or anything. I guess not, Joe. That's the way I figure it, at least. We can talk about that, too, if you'd like. All right. We won't keep you now. I'm a little nervous today, but, but I'll be okay, really. Dad? Steven? All right, over then. Here. Thank you, Joe. Oh, yeah. I'd like to thank you for making all this possible. This is it, number one! Hello, are you still there? He's not there! Steven! There yeah. you are! I've been waiting for you all day! How have you been? We've been tracing around this whole place. Well, I've been here, waiting for you. Where's your mother at? Joe? Steven, is that your father? Far out. Oh, I brought my guitar. Wait till you here. Come on, Mom! Joe? 
Hey, Maggie, get the lead out. <coughs> oh, uh, are you okay? <coughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'll be okay. Okay, good. You look terrific. I was a little worried about you. I sort of missed you, too. Hey, how long can we stay, huh? I don't know. A couple of weeks. Don't think of how long Great, come on. I'll show you my guitar. It was pretty cheap. I ripped off the case of that it cost me. Look, it's got little pockets to stay for. End of the line. Everybody off. Steve, Joe, the pack horse is here. Come and get your luggage. You leave me alone in here for one more minute, and I'm taking the next plane back to Newark. Steven, are you in there or not? Hey, Mom, come on in if you're coming. I'm not coming in. You're coming out. And, and don't, don't give me in your smart back talk or I'll split your lips. I, I didn't know what you need. There's some jelly and some peppers to put up. I found those 40 pounds on the plane, but then I have extra. You can put things under the seat. A lot of people didn't have anything, so I put stuff in their seats, too. How are you, Maggie? Oh, fine. I brought some newspapers, some cookies, and some pumpkin flowers. The airplane knew he sick. There's this man sitting next to me. He kept talking and talking. I wanted to throw up, but the man next to me made me so nervous I couldn't. Hey, come on inside. You want some coffee? Oh, I brought some coffee. What? You've done everything here already. You should have told me. I did, over the phone. Well, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, well, you never have enough. Mom sent some bread. Oh, yeah, it's over here. Hey, come on inside. No. I uh, can rest. I don't want to go inside. Why not? I'll see it. I'll see it. Well, how do I look? It's a new dress. You look real pretty. I missed you, Maggie. Really bad. You must be tired, huh? Yeah. I don't know. One minute you're there, the next minute you're here. I still feel like I'm there. What else? 3,000 miles from the sea. They are... Oh, yeah, I made a ham. What? A ham. <coughs> you can have it for lunch. <coughs> oh. What's the matter? It's no good. You mean to tell me that you just carried a ham 3,000 miles across the country? No, I put it under the seat. Well, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> I don't know. I just found it last, so I just ate it. We've got everything we need here. I told you that. You can't eat this, huh? No, I can eat it. I can eat it. That's not what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? I'm talking about they've got ham in California, just like every other place in the world, and they have stores that you can buy whatever you want. Maggie, I'll put no. it away. You don't have to look no, at it. No, it's fine. It's here now. What are we talking about? It didn't stay in the leather. And we talked and I couldn't remember. I tried. It said to come and bring Steve. That's all. At first I thought that was it. And then I got your letter. And you felt fine that I talked to you. I just made the ham. I... Maggie, I missed you. you got to tell me what's going on. Don't make me feel so stupid. Like I'm supposed to know everything. I don't know anything. I only know what I see. Maggie. But you look real good. You're all right now, huh? Maggie, listen to me. You're all right. You don't have to tell me. I can see it. You're fine. Just I got so scared. But it's all right now. I can see it's all right. I knew it would be when I got here. Yes, Maggie. Everything's all right. I knew it. I knew it. People don't want to let go, do they? They think it's a mistake. They think it's supposed to last forever. I'll never understand that. It's the one thing that you can be sure of. No matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter anything. Sooner or later, it's going to happen. You're going to die. And that's a relief if you think about it. I'm not sure I follow you. <laughs> well, the trouble is that most of us spend our entire lives trying to forget that we're going to die. And some of us even succeed. It's like pulling the cart without the horse. Well, you get the gist of it anyway. I'm afraid I've lost touch with my words. They just don't seem to add up as deeply as they used to. But you're still writing. Oh, yes, with great abandon. I may have lost touch with my words, but I still have faith in them. Eventually, they have to mean something. Am I being helpful or just boring? Very helpful. I don't see how. Too much thinking, too much talking. My former wife once said to me, Brian, we've done enough thinking. Couldn't we just dance for a few years? Did you? No. I have lousy feet. Instead, I went on about music and mathematics. And before I finished my first paragraph, she was gone. Gone for good? Yes. I see. So do I. Now. But then I didn't. I blamed her. I damned her. I hated her. I missed her. And then I got so worked up, I began to realize what she was talking about. You see, I lost the energy of it. The magic of it. No wonder she loved. What happened to her? Beverly? She's still dancing as far as I know. She must be very happy. I'm sure of it. Otherwise, she would have come back. You seem to have everything so well thought out. Well, I think it's important to be sensible. How is Mark? 
It's fine. He's welcome to come and talk to us if he likes. We've talked enough about it already. My watch has stopped. How long have I been babbling? It doesn't matter. There's no hurry. Not for you, maybe, but some of us are on a tighter schedule. I am sorry. I didn't mean it it's like okay, that. It's okay. You mustn't take all this too seriously. I don't. You always think, no matter what they tell you, you always think that you have more time. But you don't. But I appreciate what you're trying to do here. And I do, be, and I do enjoy being a guinea pig. Good. Very good. Tomorrow, then. If I'm still breathing. And even if I'm not, I don't even think that'll stop me from talking. Yes. Tomorrow.
You are the patient. Patient? Patient? I'm the corpse. I have one lung, one plastic bag for a stomach, and two springs in a battery where my heart used to be. You cut me up and took everything that wasn't nailed down. Claire? Claire? My daughter, Claire. Yes? She writes to me regularly. A letter almost every day. I've kept them all, every one, so I'll have them when I go home. She's a good girl, my Claire. Do you want to talk about Claire? No, Claire isn't with me anymore. She'll be here soon, but she isn't here now. Agnes is with me now. Agnes! Agnes is my oldest. Agnes! Claire has two children now, two beautiful twin angels. Agnes! Agnes has me. Yes, Mama, I'm coming. She's a little slow now. It's not her fault. She takes after her father. Not too pretty, not too bright. Is she here yet? Yes, Mama, I'm here. Get me out of here. Yes, Mama. Is it all for today? That's all. That's all. Now take me back. Yes, Mama. Easy. Easy. You'll upset my internal wire work. I'm sorry. Same time tomorrow? Yes. And if you have time, Agnes, we'd like to talk to you. Mama waited and waited, but she never wrote or came back to visit nothing. 
to do? Oh. How long have you been writing these letters? Almost two years. <coughs> they mean so much to her. It's important to her. It's something to hope for. What happened you to have her letter doesn't show up. Oh, but I'll think that what happened. I mean, you mean she'll probably die before she even finds out? Yes. What will you do then, Agnes? Um, please, I, I should be getting back. Agnes. I'm just now. I don't know why. I, <coughs> the pain is much worse. This medicine you've given her, it doesn't help. She had thought that it wouldn't go on this long. No, no, what does it go on? You promised She it has can't. a strong will. Yes, I know that. Sometimes that's enough. To keep a very sick person alive for a long time. But why? Why would it hurt so bad? Why? She's waiting for Claire. Oh, no. No. No, it isn't true. Agnes. It isn't wrong to hope. Waiting for Claire. No, no, she can't do that. She can't. Agnes. No. Please. I have to go. I have to go back. Will you come back tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yes. I'll come back.
graders together. And we do have quite a few awards to give out. There may be some of you here today who don't get an award who, in your mind, even though you won't admit it to your parents or to your friends, that you'd really like to have one. So my suggestion to you is think about it and next year plan ahead and next year this time perhaps you'll get an award. What we're going to do to start the day off, and I would like you to be very, very quiet and listen to the directions we're going to give you as we go along. But to begin the ceremony, Aaron Markowitz is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So would you please stand? Jennifer Everett, Paul Fernandez, Becky Hamburg, Jessica Preston, Stanton Pink, Joseph Simichek, Christy Stone, Michaela Clark, Arliss Lee, Archie Pena, Aaron Markowitz, Craig Forrest, Laura Coyer, Stephanie Nelson, Stuart Vandeventer, and Brooke Wetley. Thank you. 
<laughs> Come on, Becca. Go, Becca, go. Go, Becca, go. Push. Go, Becca, go. Come on, Becca. Come on, Becca. Go, go, go. Go Becca, pick it up. Go Becca. Go Becca, go, Becca, go. Why? Go, Becca, go get him, Becca. Come on, Becca. Keep going, Lori. Come on, Lori. Come on, keep it up. Come on, Lori. Pull, Lori, pull. Come on. Pull, Lori. Come on, Lori. Keep going. Faster, Lori. Come on. Pull, Lori, pull. Keep going, Michelle. You're doing Come on, well. Lori. Ara, 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 Ara,
Go get a towel on, bud. 62. Say hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Say, see you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Okay, and Chad Baker.
there's such a thing as sisterly loyalty. Both of them do. Encouragement. Oh my god. Each other on film, too. Come on, Becca! You're doing good! Go, Becca! Good job! Go, Becca! Go, Becca! Yeah! Hey, Max! <whistles> Found out that he's a Tibetan Terrier. Oh, there goes the S16s again. Hey, Maxie! Pretty far back from everything. 
I mean, it's a pretty nice place. It's actually quiet when the jets aren't flying. There's Max again. Hey, Max. Nice little storage area. So, there you have it. The room. The stereo and TV and stuff. And then we have a kitchen area. A couple couches and the kitchen is to the left. To the right there. The kitchen and then you walk on this way and there's a bedroom, two or three bedrooms. A TV set and heater and ceiling fan. It's very hot today. And the entrance to the house, sliding doors. Pretty cool, huh?